Okay, what, we all clap now or something? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we're really in sync today. <coughs> in sync today, Bacha yes. Bu, camera <coughs> two, camera three, we're good? Uh-huh. We are recording. Yeah? Recording. Cool. Hello. Yeah. All right, let's go. Peace. All right. Let's go. Uh, music. Cut. Mm. Let the cameras rest. But we're not going to get a beatbox from Davud. I would. Come you on. was you are supposed to be the Davud come beatbox. <laughs> you know you can do it. Davud, when you tell me you have to tell me how many minutes we have, don't don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I cannot count them. <laughs> like he was telling me how many yeah, but we how are ma- recording. Look, man, how many times have we had to say to you just keep a c- a, uh, a clock on you? <laughs> no, no, no. But I know it. Giant screen. No, is I know it. The whole studio. No, thirty. No, I know. The size of the minutes. whole studio. I know the thirty minutes is coming, but he was telling me like this. I was like, we're still having. We have 25 <laughs> minutes more because <laughs> he was doing this. <laughs> Tell me He's directing planes. A plane just... <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and I but think no. <laughs> I thought we still have 27 minutes to go. I was like, what? That was just three minutes. everyone to your favorite podcast fractured why are you laughing and i know what you are saying rashid you killed sonia and you took her place i have one answer for you what is where is the body no body no crime yeah now i'm joking sonia has a lot of work so that's why she's not here she has mountains of mountains of work only douglas knows how she's suffering she wanted to be with us but she cannot she can be with us with her soul and that's not a confession that i killed her no she can still be alive and her soul can still be here the bodies in Warsaw. All right. Oh my God. With Emma, Sonia. All right. The newest member of the family. Thank you. Little for baby Emma. Thank you for telling of us, on us. It's a lot of work to take care of a newborn. Yeah. You m- ah no, I do the thing. You might be <laughs> on your phone. <laughs> I like it in the news that they do it. Like they they talk in the. You might be on your phone and you are checking and it's the 28th of December and you're like these crazy guys from Refocus are update are sending us another podcast it's the 28th they don't have a vacation they don't go everywhere but no I mean we have vacation but we are really passionate about this podcast about advocacy and we promised you every two weeks an, uh, an episode and we are going to do it and like the great poet Tupac once said, I did not choose Thug Life, Thug Life chose me. And here in Refox we say, we did not choose advocacy, advocacy chose us. With that being said, this episode is a home team episode. Ooh. Meaning that we have the regular faces here. To my left, I have Douglas Herman. Doug, you are like the Bigfoot of podca- of this uh, fracture. Because they see you in the... In this, in the <laughs> You just call like me Sasquatch. At the end, That's wonderful. they hear your voice, but everybody's like, "Does he exist or not?" No, Douglas exists. Douglas Herman exists, and he's here with us. Thank you for joining us and for being my co-host. Oh yeah, co-host. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always been my dream to be a co-host. Co-host, yeah. yeah. On my right, I have my Refocus soulmate. Oh, lovely! Sam Ellie, see. the heart of Refocus. Yes, welcome everyone. <laughs> and we have welcome to our hearts <laughs> <laughs> don't make me panic <laughs> they have to see our hearts it's so big join us support us just do whatever you can for refocus because we gonna die for refocus because we love refocus and that was our episode for this uh, yeah. time and then <laughs> We don't camera, really need to do any more, man. We just have her say that over and over. On production, we have the best of the best, uh, Suda, on camera and directing. And Do- uh, Davud, where are you? Say hi. Which camera is he on today? Hmm? Which camera? Over there? Okay, cool. Yeah, Davud is with us. And they can jump in and uh, speak with us. And this conversation is like an insight of our regular conversations. And many times we have a meeting where we say a lot of cool stuff. And at the end, we're like, damn, why didn't we uh, film that one? It should be amazing. But, you know, this is an insight for our uh, fans to see us 
All right, let's go. <laughs> I don't know how to end the good show. Let's go. So, All right. <laughs> first question. Who wants to start? What is your favorite episode this far from the seventh that we did, and why? Dog, start. Mm. I think by the end of this episode, I would have to change my answer and say this one mm -hmm. because I think it'll be the the most reflective or uh, representative of our personality as a team, <laughs> yeah. right? Because it's like a lot of fun to be here. But I think the one that was the most informative for me uh, was the the two part one we did about uh, trans rights in Africa and in Greece, mm. specifically mm. the one in Greece uh, with Yuli and Maran. That was like we could have recorded, I don't know, for hours. Yeah. Like it just kept going. And the information that was spilling out of them was unbelievable in terms mm. of stuff that's happening right around us all the time here in central Athens. And we just kind of really don't even know it. And the insight that Moran brought and the personal experience from Cuba to all these other countries that Yuli lived in, it was really amazing. I think that was yeah, the I most informative one. Um, and maybe later we talk about the m most emotional one, mm -hmm. which if you go on our Patreon, you'd see the emotion from that particular episode mm -hmm. that I had up. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. I just wanted to say, Douglas Herman, don't mention Herat. It's my favorite one. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So we have favorites. <laughs> yeah. So for me, the my favorite one is, of course, from Afghanistan because at the period that we start to shooting, nobody covered the news from Afghanistan, and no, there's no. Okay, okay. This is my sentence. We say. There is no journalist in mm. an activist in Iran, but in Afghanistan, it was the situation was even worse than Iran. So, I would love to say Afghanistan because at least we we did our responsibility to be a voice for the people who doesn't have voice. And I'm so proud of the podcast. And the next one, of course, is with Julian Moran. Mm -hmm because they educate us a lot. They give us a lot of information and I never think about that. Yeah. And of course, with Basilis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, it was amazing. Was yeah. With Yuli, yeah, I remember Sonia saying that we could even put a camera on uh, on Yuli and it can become even documentary. And I was like, yeah, like yeah. documentary about her. Like she lived in many places. She has a lot of stories to tell. Russia. So making a, yeah. Like documentary Germany, about she her spoke would many be languages. Like yeah. worth it, really. My favorite is also <laughs> about Hirat, <laughs> but as a host, as a co-host, co-host, uh, my the really I enjoyed all the conversations. But you said something about that the media was not covering. It. Do you know when I was doing the research, reading about this to uh, to prepare for it, I go to Google and I write Afghanistan news. What do I find? The first news they were covering the World Cup of Cricket because Afghanistan was playing. And then you see Afghanistan qualified for the semifinals and then the second. The second, it's the same uh, media. Uh, 2,500 people d like died. Guys, shouldn't that be there? No, every time they are covering the, the cricket made me really angry. And at the end made me happy that we did uh, cover it. Yeah. yeah. But as, uh, as a fan, if I go back, take out myself away, why it was like my favorite Hirat because of uh, Zubair, especially when he showed us his house. Yeah. And it was the f like, and he was staying there. And for me, that's a sec uh, insecurity of mine because I always blame myself. I should have stayed there and fought for Western Sahara, for Algeria, for Africa, for whatever. But I remember when Sonia asked him, "Why are you staying there?" and he had this smile on his face. He said, "Someone must stay here to to fight." So that's will always be my insecurity that why I didn't leave. Uh, why I why I left? Why I didn't stay? So that was really uh, affected me like a lot, a lot. I was also happy to know that, okay, I l left, but I hope like one person like Zubay also stayed in my country or the place that I care about and fought for them. Yeah, yeah but he was a huge inspiration. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. I really want to say, okay, we are leaving our country, but we are uh, still fighting. Mm. Really, I I can say even more serious because at least we have freedom to speak up and we have uh, like media labs so we can like really fighting for our 
uh, needs and everything that we dreams. Yeah. Uh, so. You know, it's not the same thing, obviously, but uh, I feel the same way. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's not the same, but... Yeah, but I mean, I left my country too, and there's a lot of crazy things happening back there. Oh, and, yeah. and I have a little bit of that feeling too of like, should I really be here or should mm -hmm. I be there fighting the good fight uh, against the, the forces that are really damaging mm. the structure of our society? But uh, I can go back, you know, and that's the difference in this scenario. Like, you guys really can't. Um, and that's really unfair. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, 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 I feel that energy the same way. I, I think about it all the time. I think, I'd, as you know, I do like double shifts. I am in Eastern European time. And then when that, yeah. when you all go to bed, I'm on Eastern Standard Time in New York. Yeah. I'm in Philly to uh, figure out what the hell's happening there. And it's never really a nice report. Yeah, but also sometimes uh, like the family don't help you. Like, for example, my family, they, I don't know, they, they don't take it serious. They they say no, you shouldn't have gone into politics. You should have stayed here with us, all my brothers and sisters. And I was like, you raised me this. I remember uh, growing up, and my brother uh, used to tell us there is people from the the government are coming to search the houses, and he was politically he was a communist. He was everything, and he used to put uh, those leaflets, uh, the papers, in my toys. And I was like five in years or six toys? years old, and I knew it. Like, and I was f I was so happy that. The, the army they were coming and they were like searching through my stuff and <laughs> i know and i i was like I, I was like a devil i could i was thinking to even at five or six i was like i can ruin my brother's life right now i can just say hey bro open that thing here <laughs> and you open it and I, all my family will go to jail and i was like oh my god thank god i didn't do that really but i was and then i was talking to my mother, I was like, you taught me this five years old i didn't tell you to put me into politics, like I mean, you. So at 18 years old, when I was fighting, when I was uh, writing stuff, you come and tell me, "Oh no, you should get married." No, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. I don't know, yeah. So baby Stewie, and yeah, you, you were plotting how to take over the world a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, yes, and the it's power you now. Had. I start with uh, with fractured. I'm taking over <laughs> fractured. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, Sonia. Yeah, See he you. subtly <laughs> just said, you know, we, you know, we should totally film the podcast. And what did and I then, say? Uh, and then he's like, uh, you know, maybe we could have a co-host. And we're like, yeah, that's a great idea, Rashid. And suddenly here he is. And what did I what say? What happened about to my wife? Like, <laughs> what did I say about the first decision if I became dictator? Mm. one app from now on there is no slack <laughs> there is no telegram <laughs> choose one of them and let's use it which one would you prefer telegram that's it Why? send all your files there. i don't know it's easier than slack and i hate threads no more threads answer everything there <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. well i respect the telegram <laughs> it's it's open source it's free and it's protected and it's mm. uh i don't know they uh, say it's for the russians is it really protected no no none of them is are protected no well, at least you could send like gigabytes worth of video files without it being squeezed down to nothing. <laughs> and, and then we don't have to worry about everyone saying, hey, we're having an exhibition here. Here's my video file. And it's like two kilobytes. <laughs> like, <laughs> that brings thanks so much. That brings me <laughs> to our next uh, question. What are your personal challenges regarding your role on the podcast? That might be your one of your challenges, the Telegram. And what are the things you enjoy doing and you want to continue doing? Yeah, Ellie, let's go. Hmm. Okay, so most the most responsibility that I have is uh, sound, and mm -hmm. I'm completely okay with that, and I'm really enjoy because today we have a sound class, so every day I can develop my skills, and it makes me super happy. But what was the second question? Uh. <laughs> I don't think you're honest. The last time I made you crazy when I had the pen and was like, tick, 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 yes. tick, 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 yes. So that's what one of your challenges. It's not a challenge. Just don't do that, bro. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. She's she's channeling we are uh, speaking she's about. scary <laughs> when she's like using her cute face, but she's like, don't do that, bro, or something will happen to you outside. Nah, yes. <laughs> Come over yeah. to my house for pasta. Uh, yeah. And no. then all of a sudden... <laughs> I'm sorry, Ellie, I will never do that again. <laughs> you see today, no more pens, not even a, a mouse here. Bravo, I'm bravo. Yeah. I'm really happy to see you're developing your Thank you so much. stuff. <laughs> so the second part, what do you enjoy doing more? Podcast. No, in the podcast, yes. You I, I believe we... Okay, if you are asking me, I'm always back to Iran and Afghanistan and this kind of people doesn't have voice so mm -hmm. i just want to be 
yeah. a pure voice from the pure people because they deserve to understand and also understand and, um, the situation of them. And we are doing for, it's not only for Iran or Afghanistan, we are doing like different mm. country, different situation, Lesbos, different nationalities, mm. yeah. So let's do it more cool. together. Well, in, I guess until today, I was really enjoying this Bigfoot role, right? Where I'm just... Today, you are not a myth anymore. Mm, you are so real. It's like Bill Brasky or something. Where <laughs> you are it's real. just tall tales about my existence. And But uh, yeah, uh, it's been... That's the goal. Make yourself obsolete. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that I could like literally not even be in the room sometimes and know that this was working, can be in another country, know that it's going to be edited appropriately and on time. Wait, wait, wait. wait. That I know makes me feel I really good. I know where you're going with this. And mm. I don't like it. You don't? You wanna take, he wants to take himself slowly, slowly away from us until one time guys i bought a house in new york or miami <laughs> or whatever we're having a kid i'm like whoa dog where did this come from he's like yeah i was teaching you to be all on your own yes we can do everything you can teach us and we can be self-sufficient all here but we still want you around well that's good because you're the chosen family so i appreciate yeah so the yeah desire no to stick around don't go searching for any okay. houses in los angeles or miami there are no waterfalls in my future uh, i'm gonna block no. I wanna like blackmail you. The that I'm used to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just stick here. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no. Go. No, it's fine. I, that's, that's it. I. That's my. I really love the the fact that I, I, when we first started podcasting years ago, I was the host of the first two episodes. Oh. Who's sorry? Wow. I didn't even have a co. <laughs> oh my god. It was just god. host, <laughs> right? And uh, and that was fun. It was just Sony and I, just the two of us doing this and going to different locations and talking about the issues that we saw firsthand. But then when we brought this back, it was definitely through the passion that Sonia had for this and wanting to bring it back to life in uh, in 2022 when we were still on Lesbos only. And now it's, you know, this really awesome thing that we keep going and that everyone else can be a part of. And the fact that we, you know, it was then we added Majid to the editing process and he was part of the podcast. And now we have a whole team of seven people doing this and I'm sure more people want to join it's exciting to see the exponential growth of it and now that it's on youtube with great ideas from you guys and dawood the same thing you know making the shorts and getting all this stuff out there for more people to engage with that that's the definitely a pride of the year um and what was the other half it was like uh <laughs> challenges no i guess the challenge the first all the one things i like doing in the doing podcast in mm. our podcast maybe i kind of just said that but like i mean yeah 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 but I also want to highlight your role, like when we finish and you back everything and you really like to do that. And sometimes we leave you alone and really it <laughs> hurts, really it hurts. Some, but also it's like uh, like, like reassuring as if like, yeah, like there is some someone is here. Like, OK, we did this and dog is taking care of everything. And we always know that w you back things up. So we are we are not, you know, being unprofessional, throwing stuff around, but we really like it how you do well. it. And uh, there are two types of people in the world. <laughs> those who back stuff up and those who regret it. And yeah. they didn't. So Nice. I, one day, I won't be the DIT anymore. And it'll be really interesting to be like, okay, guys, I'm going to go get eat something. I'll see you tomorrow yeah, morning. And then uh, you give me a, okay. an ETA when you actually leave the lab. Uh, can I come with you? Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Dawood, you are back in the files. That's yeah. your next role. Next, then next time it will switch, or I'll be like, I'll just hand him the camera, like, okay, peace out, bro. I'll see you later. <laughs> All right. So for me, the challenges are, is the thing that I really liked before is like uh, going and uh, searching about the topic and reading, so I can have more information. But sometimes when I'm searching, I'm like, oh my god, this thing happened. It's worse than I ever wanted. When I was reading about the LGBT in uh, in Cuba, because I always had this. Uh, romantic idea about Cuba and stuff and how they treat people and then I discovered that uh, you know I, I knew that uh, Che Guevara and uh, Fidel Castro were not perfect not even close and they did a lot of stuff but then I understood that they did uh, horrible things and then at the end of his life he's saying oh guys I'm sorry for the LGBT I should have done more shut the fuck up ah, sorry beep <laughs> uh, <laughs> that you can do it in editing so and really like i was shocked because sometimes like uh, knowledge 
sometimes I've been like, ah, oh, fuck, why didn't I just be a person? I'm not uh, disrespecting anyone. Just be like a shepherd in a mountain and just live it. Because when sometimes when you know it's too much, you cannot sleep sometimes. Mm-hmm. But in in a way, I'm like, all right, like like I said in the beginning, maybe advocacy chose me or. So I need to step up, even if it's like uh, something that it, it hurts. But someone needs to step up. Like Zubair said, someone has to do it. And, yeah. Well, I think that's one of the challenges, probably, is that we are only we only have the capacity to do this every two weeks. And even that's a stretch with all the other work we're doing. But, uh, I mean, the, the number of topics we could have covered already, we could have at least gotten to 16 topics. And I think that's the yeah. stress of, like, yeah. We can't get to all of these things, and then none of them are really happy. Not not a single one of the episodes that we report on is. I think one of our uh, colleagues or friends said that that we have the most depressing podcast (laughs) on on the radio because of the things we talk about and the the, you know, as you're saying, we like dig a little deeper to the, and then it's what, and every time you read a little further, you're like really shocked at to what you don't don't even really hear about until you do that extra research. But I'm, ass- I'm assuming you also have to sift through an outrageous mountain of like misinformation and oh, yeah, false course. stuff and just like stuff, chaos yeah. and uh, just really like mischievous, like terrible, you know, like really terrible content that is that's just trying to drive you to think certain ways yeah. that are not true. But it's also something that I enjoy because like I said, someone needs to read this stuff and say, but my like my answer to the people who said it's negative i mean these people they go and watch uh like serial killer documentaries and stuff that's also negative yeah, but that's escapism uh, yeah you see but it's like a documentary you're not m- so th- who said this is negative for me it's not negative it's just that life this is it you need to experience everything sadness and you cannot uh, only talk about uh, positive things and how can you fix them if you don't know that there is an issue there? How can we fix, uh, how can we help the people in Afghanistan if we don't know that they are under uh, under the fucking Taliban peep and <laughs> under the f- fucking <laughs> hard wings, another peep? Uh, we someone should have done it. Yeah, I don't know. And you can still say it's negative, but yeah, I would like to watch it. I am watching a lot of ne- negative, negative podcasts, but uh, in my mind, it, uh, it's better for me to know because I don't want it to be like oh. Oh my God! I remember when I was working with uh, that company from Canada, and I used to talk with people, and they ask me where where am I located, and I say Greece, and like, oh my God, Greece! I want to visit, and I was like, and they tell me if we go there, can you tell us where to go? To yeah, can you go to the one time one guy, but he was the person that you could talk to. I told him, yeah, I can send you some locations about the camps that are refugees are there. You can go visit them, and he was shocked. He was like, what? I was like, yeah, Greece is not about sunshine and stuff. There are a lot of uh, camps there. They they are holding people as animals. So people have n- have no idea. And sometimes you're like, <gasps> wow. And that's our mission, like, to show them if you accept it. Yeah, if you don't, but at least we did our mission. So we can go with which... Uh, no. How can we make this podcast better? For me, I can... But go. Ooh, how can we make it better? Yeah, how can we make it better? Like, mm. And go wild, I mean... Maybe, I mean, this is cool that we get to do it like this, but maybe it's cool if we went live with it a couple of times. Yeah. And we got some extra equipment in here and we cut and we cut it live. Mm. So it's like a TV show mm. where you have a live audio video mix instead of, and so it's the same work that you do on the back end and edit, but we can do it like a live program. Mm. That could be fun. And then maybe we could yeah. uh, sell tickets. Right, create a revenue stream for refocus to support us, and then people can buy a ticket for the live program, and then it's, you know, we can make the other pieces available later. But uh, just the idea of that moment, it's like a regular television show. Because I kind of feel like yeah, yeah, this does feel like a TV show when you watch it. And we have like a lot of content, each one of us. And I saw one of the one of my favorite. It's about comedy. One of my favorite podcasts. About and now they're they're touring as the podcast. And they go there and they do it in that city and this city. And also there's this guy, Jordan Peterson, and he's a psychologist from Canada. And now he's touring with his podcast. So And they sell and, and people want to sit with them and talk and ask them questions. Really, it's it can be also well that idea for us. That could be cool then because then the campaign for the podcast to travel, to come to their hometown, yeah, is that they have to pressure yeah. the governments to give you guys freedom of movement. Mm. Yeah. Oh and yeah. then you can travel with the podcast instead <laughs> of... It yeah. has to happen here, and we have to bring everyone to Athens. Mm. 
Oh, they they will say we can allow you only to do it in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> you you can't yes. go outside. Do it here. It's okay. Just yeah. So cool. That's your. Oh, that, that's yeah. one idea. Sure. Um, yeah. What about you, Alan? Mm, about me, you know, it is my one of my dreams that we, okay, we are speaking always about the problem that people or like refugee have, but I would love to speak with. Uh, artists from different community or nationality and I uh, speak about the problem that artists have you know because okay uh, that about the situation of refugee we can speak uh, all the time but nobody is speaking about the okay as an artist what is your problem mm -hmm. and what do you need as an artist and I would love to like listen to the artist what is their new idea what they need and how do they can make it and how we can support them if they are not in Europe for example if they are in Afghanistan Iran or different country and they don't uh, like have this kind of support how we can support them locally in their homeland mm -hmm. and or be a voice for the for the artist but in a their homeland mm -hmm. so it is one of my dreams and i would love to make it one day together and yeah of course well we could do that like you know we have the commercial that normally references the guests of the show yeah but we could do an artist of the week and profile in the episode yeah do an out open call see who responds see who submits some content say hey i would love to have that free press and uh, we promote some people from the communities that uh, we support and yeah that could be really cool it yeah. is like really amazing yeah, yeah it's i love it because okay many many people are they are living in a different country they can speak english with us and they can also like through their art they can uh, speak about the like problems or situation that they have so it's uh, i love this idea cool personally i think, I think uh, whoever's doing sound today is going to really love ellie with her elf bill with her elf bells yeah you see i can hear it in the background of everything thank you guys please <laughs> love me more, <laughs> me more. We love you. no more more she only has herself to blame when she <laughs> <to> <laughs> the sound, right? i think it's time for our break and what are we uh, advertising Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're advertising Refocus this time. Did you know we have Patreon page now? Go there and support us. It's not an order. Just uh, please go there and support us. And uh, go to our website. We have a lot of cool stuff. Mugs, uh, T-shirts, uh, a lot of cool designs, uh, laptop sleeves. I have no idea what are those. <laughs> sleeves for laptop? I have no idea. Yeah, uh, hoodies. So, yeah, and you're going to see the video right now. A fundraising expert recently told us, your feed is too positive. You need to use images that show the suffering. You have to show the problem, but we won't show you pictures of crying children to pull at your heartstrings. We won't show you the homeless in Athens fresh off receiving asylum protection. We won't show you the exploitative working conditions our students must endure. What we will show you is a solution. Our solution. Our way of making a change. Our way of creating safety, stability, community. Our way of enabling a future we know is possible. Together we can create that future. Together we can change real lives, help them develop real skills, and ensure the real futures that they're fighting for. The media may show you takers, but we cultivate givers. Join us and change their future. Ah, cool. All right. Welcome back to the second part of this uh, episode, the home team uh, episode. And uh, we are still with uh, Douglas here, <laughs> but now I need to ask you a question. So, yes. Yeah, so, Doug, a question. Which episode, episodes or one you like us to cover in the future and why? Well, we had this laundry list of topics we wanted to cover. We've been talking about these things since like September yeah. and we haven't we haven't really gotten a chance to cover the experience that refugees have inside the Greek education system. Yeah. Um, I know that you came up with this really wonderful idea of talking about statelessness, which I was really excited to hear uh, about, like, how can we touch upon that topic? 
I mean, I loved what Ellie said before about like trying to profile artists and the experiences that people are having. Uh, we haven't touched upon the U.S. Mexico border. Oh yeah, I have been watching oh, a lot like of about pretty it. Pretty ridiculous yeah. shit happening down there too, and I feel a little bit, um, I don't know, hypocritical here. We're like uh, spending a lot of time calling out EU governments about what they're doing. Meanwhile, the situation in America at the border is really bad, and um, people aren't being treated with any sense of respect. And a lot of things are being used as excuses to hold people out, and it's been going on. It's not just a, it's it's actually a bipartisan issue in America. It's not just one side or the other uh, what what's going on in Podlasha at the border with Poland and Belarus versus the way the Ukrainians were just like open the door bring everyone in and support them there's a lot of stuff to talk about unfortunately none of it's really positive yeah I would like to have this uh, it's a really good idea because I have been listening to a lot of podcasts about this issue in the borders there and I'm listening to both sides people who doesn't want it or the one who are with Trump, the one against Trump, the one are with Biden and without, and I'm just, I don't know, I'm in the middle. I don't want to take sides because uh, when you see like thousands and thousands going there and then they say they, they just arrive and give them their paper, okay, your appointment is, I don't know, da, 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 and then they go and they disappear, but where are these people? And the problems that the border states are facing, so I would like to hear it also from your point of view because after all, you live there and you have, a, I, and I saw Elon Musk one time went there to Texas and he was also talking about this stuff. I was like, all right, so it's really huge so, deal. So then we could do a special episode of really? DeSantis yeah, yeah. and Abbott, the governors yeah. charged them with human trafficking then, I guess. Yeah. Because yeah. they're literally doing that. They're yeah. actually trafficking people from one state to another. Mm. Wow. And leaving them in places. And uh, I think a really, really awesome thing has been happening though in New York and there's a lot of problems there with a mm. huge influx of people that are being uh, pushed to come to these sanctuary cities. But the reaction uh, is really interesting that like people are saying things like our newest New Yorkers, yeah. as opposed to these migrants have to go. It's like there okay. are people who are basically like, no, yeah. these are the newest members of our community and they need these supports and they need these protections and they need these opportunities to integrate appropriately into the life of this city. And if if every if every state mm. just tried that yeah. and tried to actually put some energy towards integration, I think we'd have a very different situation here in Greece, uh, in 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 southern states in America as well, and then a distribution just like mm. in in Europe, the northern countries, just like the northern states in America. I mean, it's it's very kind of a reflective of there's a mirror here, and uh, both sides need to really pay attention to the needs of the southern border regions. And then give people a chance to integrate and then also stop leaving it on the shoulders of just some. And yeah. be, uh, be fair about how you handle these issues. They're not, they're not, um, it's not rocket science. You can figure out a path if you put people in front of politics. Yeah. So you're on that. I would love that for that episode cool. to happen. Amazing. We have with us Suda. Yes. Where did Ellie go? What happened to her? Who are you? Huh? I have no idea. Who is she? She's got the same hat, though. No she stole idea, it. Yeah. But the hair changed color. I guess we're doing a podcast There's with her. Abhi Roshan here. Though. I guess we're doing because a podcast. Because we are sister, <laughs> oh. so we have a different color. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You're not under uh, arrest. Yeah. It's okay. She's like, I really? Feel yes, that. We are sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, this is my paper. Wait, they're sisters? <laughs> no. I feel that. Because, as you know, I have uh, some problem. And, uh, <laughs> okay. I feel that uh, I am under arresting. <laughs> With all the lights. <laughs> With all the light, yes. yeah. All right. And I don't want to right now confess about my situation. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Suda. Yes. Uh, you can, well, let's go from the beginning. Your favorite episode. Uh, as far and why, yeah. As a director, I can say which one of my baby is my favorite. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, uh, okay, I can say the that episode we covering the earthquake in Afghanistan was uh, for me favorite one because nobody cares about what happened in Afghanistan and... Uh, near the 6,400 6, people died in that earthquake and no news covered that happened. And even the, the organization that they work for, the human rights, we mm -hmm. didn't hear anything about this happening, you know. 
and uh, again the I can say the uh, third and fourth episode with uh, Julie it was amazing because it was opened a new door for us to reaching to these people and understand what their situation in their homeland and also in Greece and what the trouble that they are facing every day with that and we doesn't know anything about but also that episode was also good for you as a director and an editor because yes. we had everybody here and yeah. good cameras good lighting so we could control everything yeah so exactly. that was also amazing yeah it was amazing yeah it felt like that nice yeah and for sure the uh, episode one and two with the Vasilis and Sheila again was my pa- favorite one because I worked with them in the Tehran set and again in the studio and it was really amazing and especially because they both of them they are speak about the situation in Iran and the people on the move yeah it was really amazing for me you're a true mama bear you said mm-hmm. So many favorites. Yeah. You know, like every episode is a little. A yeah, little I can say I love all of them. <laughs> I and forgot about the Sylvia and Lorraine <laughs> in the episode six and seven. Yeah, I love them both because also they cover the news that is not public. You know. Yeah, I love them both. So. Also, in another sense, you are a mother bear because you. If it wasn't for you and Ellie and your connections, you would never have those guests. To be honest, really. Yeah. And more coming, really. So I really appreciate you here with us. Not only for that, for everything, but for the podcast, that's really huge role that nobody knows. Maybe that you are facilitating that role to finding uh, guests like this. Yeah. So thank you so much, really. And yeah. I have to say thank you, Douglas, to bring us this opportunity to uh, start uh, this new uh, episode uh, with the uh, filming, also not just be a voice. Yeah, we are. We have a face now. Yes, people and can see everybody us. can see <laughs> our face. Yeah. Yeah, but it was like your idea. I mean, <laughs> every, we just said let's do that. You know. Yeah, and it was amazing. Thank we had you. All the, we have all the tools, and we have all the people, and you guys have been rock stars this whole time, this whole year. It's been the bright spot of 2023, which has been pretty shitty, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but thank you for everything you guys are doing to make this possible it's again i'm happy to be bigfoot in the shadows it's cool now you're not thank you you are in the light uh where are my questions yeah oh as a director oh and my holy jesus and an editor <laughs> and an editor i know you have a list of challenges but uh give us the worst one <laughs> The worst one is when we are recording the our guests and they are not in our studio mm. and they are in the other yeah. environment and we have to record them with the Zoom, Zoom is very hard uh, situation that you want to fix to everything be uh, in the very high quality and with the mm. Zoom recorder is not going to be possible because the quality is worse than and network issue in Greece oh my god kill us because the <laughs> voice have a delay mm. and you can fix it yeah you think that it. at this point in time that considering the pandemic that zoom would already by this point host like hd quality video <laughs> yeah. but no <laughs> we're paying for it every month and we still only get 720 if we're lucky that's pretty kind of scary I yeah. saw a meme, a guy took a picture of the headquarters of Zoom and he's like, why these guys have offices? <laughs> and I was like, yes, <laughs> this guy invented work from home, guys, and they have offices? And what are they doing? <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and second thought is uh, sometimes it's hard uh, because we're recording with the uh, three or sometimes with the uh, more camera and it's so hard to get the same color profile, the mm, same yeah. quality, and it's so hard when you want to match the, all these camera together. Yeah. I know it's something... This is the other challenge that we face. <laughs> I Yeah, I don't want to make you feel... Uh, upset but i really like this side of you that's perfectionist 
many times and even you ask me and then you ask dog and you ask Ellie and like hey, can you check it again can, I know for you maybe it's a challenge but for me I feel really safe when you are handling that thing I feel really safe that okay there is someone who really wants to do it really good 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 like you do it yeah yes because uh, if we know that we are using the professional tools so we have to see the result as a per, as a professional yeah. So we have to check over and over and sometimes because you're looking in the one, you listen to one voice and listen, see the one picture for you, you thinking everything is okay. Yeah. So you have to ask to other person to check you because maybe sometimes is a, a small thing and you, because you are reviewed, you, do, you didn't see it. But the other person, the fresh guy, even came, mm -hmm. see, okay, this is the problem, and you have to fix it. Yeah. I mean, aren't you happy about the editing work? I mean, because, like, you know what you look like in real life, and then in the yeah, podcast, then I'm like, they make magic happen, that right? sexy guy? It's me? Wow, okay, at least I'm there in the internet, in the world, in that world. I'm good He's still makeup free too. Yeah, and yeah. he's impressive. a very cool host, uh, <laughs> famous <laughs> Okay, finally someone is uh, talking about me. Yeah, finally lights are on me. You were just like, hey, Sudan, Ali, and Douglas, and finally someone is thanking me. Yeah, Davud, come here. <laughs> <laughs> is he going to talk or no? You uh, he I should. Plan. Yeah, what well, is your plan? I mean, what is I mean your plan? actually, I'm kind of tired of sitting next to you, so I think I'm just going to get the hell out of here. <clears throat> I mean, Thank you so much. For honestly, I mean, like, yeah, we, we can talk a lot about how cool this podcast is, but honestly, this is bullshit. All right. The the Afghan Douglas Herman. On, <laughs> uh, let's go. What's up, everybody? The hat is on. Did you mm -hmm. check? Turn it on. The hat. Okay, cool. Beep, beep. Let's go. Davud, welcome with Listen, us. Well, our baby you? Jesus, huh? our baby <laughs> student. <laughs> Monster. How's okay. it going, everybody? Good, good. We are good. We are doing a podcast. You want in? Yeah, leave that guy there with the camera. Yeah. Davud with us, he's our best, best cameras man because he deals with all the cameras, not only cameraman. Davud, your favorite episode so far and uh, why? Actually, for me, I think, I don't know, do, uh, did we put the extended episode from the... Uh, yeah, yeah, they are on Patreon. Yeah. Another uh, chance for me to... Uh, advertise Patreon. Go to Patreon to see what uh, David is talking about. So yeah, the one spoil about it the, for them about the situation happened in Harat, but we had this extended episode and it was kind of like the same we we did here. Yeah, we're doing it now. Like everybody was there, and I was trying to film everybody, and it was super powerful. Like mm. one of the yeah, it was it like I mean that's the best um episode i really liked it because i was editing that part and like i was hearing like those words over and over and over and it was really powerful for me and i really liked it and it clicked on me also cool so as an editor as cameraman as a light guy what are you going down <laughs> your challenges in this role or challenge my challenge and the things that you like to enjoy so both actually like i don't know the exact challenge i really like to do because like it's like you know i know a little bit kind of like of everything and i'm trying like just to hang like hang around with everything with camera with editing and mm. this kind of stuff and that is cool like every time like different stuff's happening yeah, just different stuff and new challenges. But no matter, we are always like doing our best and yeah, everything is under control. Uh, about the favorite, actually, like, uh, I've never think about the favorite things I really like to do. That. But personally, it's like um, just to be with your friends, like just uh, share your new ideas have yeah have our new ideas and talk about it and go on with it again and do it you know as a, as we do like here like as a production team you know 
and I know you have a lot of ideas, and this takes me to my next question. Mm-hmm. Many times you talk, even when we have parties, ah, I want to make this better, refocus better, this, and we really love it. And so uh, you can share with us some of your ideas for the podcast. How can we make it way much better? For the podcast, like, like mostly, like, I'm thinking, like, technically, mm-hmm. and uh, I think, like, the thing I really like to say is uh, to develop uh, our equipments, mm-hmm. like to have better studio. I know, like this is our first time we went to the video for the podcast, but that is really good and we did really uh, perfect job. But for me, it's not enough. Like mm-hmm. we need more, more. As you said, like there's these guys, like they go all over the places and they have their own podcast. Why we cannot be them? Yeah. yeah. You can just like bigger studio, more equipment, more cameras and better qualities and you know, it's kind of stuff. And uh, of course we need better ideas also, you know, better ideas. Because the main thing is like, it's not about what you watch, it's about like, what is it about, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the content. Okay. Mama Bear. Yep. Talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you deal with... So many times, like Davud mentioned, uh, the excellent episode when we were all here and crying about what happened. How do you deal personally with these negative feelings after an emotional episode? Oh, very nice question. Uh, actually, it's looked like uh, they are with me for a while. And I'm not trying to forget this moment because this is uh, look like uh, uh, they are our friend. They we are human. We can uh, close our eyes and not see them. This is uh, something is with us, but we try to solve it to cover that news. And I think this is the best way that you can. Uh, feel peace in your life yep I'm doing like that nice Tavu, do you have something to say about that? I mean the main thing is like okay at least we are not quiet okay there is this pain like eating yeah. from inside but when you go on like when you start talking about it and at least you know okay we're gonna publish it and at least there is like some people are watching us and they hear us and that is enough, like, it really uh, feels so good that uh, the thing, it was, like, so annoying for you. You gave it out. Okay, it's still, like, it still hurt, hurts, but not as much as before because there is some people is, like, with us, you know. And that's a little bit, like, make your hands warmer, you know. For me, it's always relieving when... I think about it as okay it's negative and we are talking about it but sometimes I say it's better that it's coming through us we are as a filter so we take this information and we talk about it. better maybe people they cannot really go and read or see pictures of the like destruction and really know the truth in a way like we are doing it for the people as we are as a filter and of course we are like as if we are the first line of defense so it hurt more, but at least for me to say that, okay, we are doing it for the people so they know. And that's it, that's we it. we also lived through this stuff. So we already have an experience of dealing with negative stuff. And now we are trying to share not only the information, but also how we deal with this stuff. Because someone can be like, wow, you came back, you came from this background of war and stuff, and you're still talking about this stuff. And some of, some of people, they don't. But for us, we are still here and... Uh, it can seem like it's not a choice, but yeah, you feel it in your heart that you have been chosen from by this advocacy and you want to stick with it and do your best. Yeah. Thank you. So, are you jumping back in to answer my other questions? Hmm? If someone wants to switch, it's all right. Yeah. Huh? Or dog doesn't want to. Okay. Sorry. Dog, you don't yeah. want to answer this question? Your negative feeling? And I want to hear you because you started this thing. I started it. 
No, not the negative thinking. You started refocusing and he's advocacy and stuff. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, come. Jump. I don't want to yeah. take that boot out of here, but you might have that. <laughs> Jeez, man. All right. Okay. The change in the minute 56, team. Okay. So, yeah. You started this, and sometimes I'm like, this guy is crazy. Not in a bad way, because to come from the US or whatever and to say, no, I want to fight and I want to do this. And I know you started it with uh, teaching uh, photography and stuff with phones and stuff. And here we are, we are. I know that's not uh, a lot of progress, but I, for me, it's a huge progress. And so, and through this, a lot of negative, a lot of stories, you are in the front line, like literally in the front line, in, especially in Lesbos. So how do you deal personally with this? Well, I have yeah. Sonia, and All right. that changes everything. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> I really, you know, um, if I'm brutally honest with it, if I didn't meet her at the border of Serbia and Hungary, I may not know you. Um, but thank you, Sonia. Yes, you should thank Sonia. <laughs> um, but prior to that, I, I definitely was seeing these things happening and was following this story and wanted to kind of understand it better so I could have my students in America figure it out for themselves instead of listening to this like kind of, I don't know, fast news. It's like a couple of minutes. It's almost like social media type length bites of information, which clearly is incomprehensive. And it has a bias. It has a skewed view. Uh, and now it's all about what sells. And this was so much more about people. So uh, a good friend of mine, um, Jason Blackader, he's one of my friends in Philadelphia. And he, I remember him saying one day, he said, hey, you know, like if you had, if no money wasn't an issue and this wasn't a problem and there was nothing standing in your way, what would you do with your mm -hmm. summer this particular summer? I was kind of on the fence of where to go and spend some time outside the classroom. And I said, well, I would actually like to get a better understanding of what's going on and why people are coming into Europe the way they are into Greece. And so he's like, well, if there's someone I know who would just go do it, it's you. And then I kind of bought a ticket the next morning and I flew to Turkey and then I started this journey. And at the end of that journey of seeing the experiences of the people on the Turkish side that were like tens of thousands of people who are still there, coming to the Greek islands, seeing what's happening in Chios and Lesbos, and then coming to Athens and seeing the squats and the communities of civil action, people who were trying to help uh, ensure that uh, people had basic human supports, go up to Idomini, uh, where everyone was trapped at the borders before the EU-Turkey deal, then go through the Balkans, and then eventually to the border with Serbia-Hungary after Belgrade. And then I met Sonia on that last day, and uh, I stayed in touch with the whole entire issue, as well as her, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and. Uh, and then um, it was kind of in my brain, it was already a done deal mm -hmm. that I would come back and that we would find a way to do something more um, significant, not just report it. So, I mean, like we say this a lot when we are doing interviews, it's, I was always bringing the, I was always bringing the crisis into the classroom to try to get people mm -hmm. to pay attention to it, but nothing was changing on the ground. Mm -hmm. No one on Lesbos was getting access to education or skills training or any psychosocial support or, you know, it was just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And it was another year had passed and it's like, this is insane. So what if we flipped it? What if we did what we were doing with inner city youth mm -hmm. in Philly and brought it to the camp, brought it to the crisis zone instead of the, you know, bring the classroom to them and try. And we, it was a bit of a beta test and mm -hmm. we just kind of showed up with, literally zero dollars, uh, zero. We had a computer, a camera, a mic, and just the two of us. And we started with mobile devices out of necessity, but we also mm -hmm. really believed in the idea that like, yeah. that's a really strong tool to use and know how to use it. And then those early students were coming back from Moria camp with beautiful pictures of terrible situations, but like the composition mm -hmm. and the, ah, it was just really kind of, and then a moment of, it was a kind of an inter, uh, journalistic interview type moment like this where we didn't have translation. Mm -hmm. It was two, um, two of our students from Cameroon um, and, uh, and from the Congo. And the students from the Congo, uh, they didn't speak enough English. And so we had a friend of ours who was going to do translation and she couldn't come that day. 
And so I just was like, hey, <laughs> I, we had already been showing them how to use the tools. And I was like, how about you guys just interview each other? Yeah. And it was so cool no, to watch okay. them take it so seriously and mm. and not just play the role of journalist, but be journalists. Like they were really diving in, but it was interesting. Very different in age. One was like 42 and one was like 19. So it was like different generations, both on Lesbos, both from DRC and both needing to express their pride for their country, but also the reasons why they left and what their challenges were. And that was it. And from that day forward, I was like, that's it. We got to do this for real. Um, and then we started building. And now here we are. Right. Yeah. But I think it, if I didn't have Sonia, I don't know how I would process the, mm -hmm. the negative stuff because it is heavy and we have each other to talk to and lean on and cry with. And, and now we have all of you guys too. So the family keeps growing and we always have someone to listen to and someone to speak to. Amazing. I'm out of questions. Who wants to say what? something? Rashid's out of questions. I don't think that's actually humanly yeah. possible. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Different person. That's kind of that's a lie. <laughs> yeah. So who wants to say something? I would like to also to hear from you. Uh, how do you deal with this negative feeling after an emotional episode like we had with Super and Diasa? Come on, our like mm -hmm. our real life is like a podcast, and all everything that <laughs> we are. <laughs> speaking about in a podcast is a real life for all of us so uh, the qu the answer of your question is how you do you alive right now <laughs> i think this is a, this mm. is a uh, better question how you are alive after this kind of experience as you have but okay we i think i'm here in uh, in europe after like five years at least I can say and then uh, I think we grow up how to deal with all impossible problem that we have and it's some of them there is no solution for them but at least uh, we can deal with all the problem with the uh, support of refocus because every time we have problem we have refocus and we have magic Douglas so we have solution <laughs> But I think it is our responsibility to use our babies for others like us and do something for them. Cool. Nice. Davo, do you want to say something? Oh, you're the host. Do you want to say something? You want to say something? Why not? Okay. Fam, will say something. Ah, that's uh, Mr. Nori. Which episode you want you want us to cover in the future and uh, why? Go wild. If you want Mr. your friend, Mr. Beast, we can have him here. You mean like which episode we had? No, before? in the future, a topic you want us to have an episode about or a person you want us to talk to. I mean, generally, like, I'm not that much in like kind of news and this kind of stuff. But if I uh, want to mention something, it's like, okay, um, I, um, I'm, but, uh, I'm good in social and media, kind of like. Because I'm always like following good things like what's happening or this kind of stuff. But uh, for me, it's like, okay, in general, okay, we can make another podcast. Like we have Fractured. Oh. It goes just by refugees and this kind of stuff and human rights. We can make another podcast like to have it like two podcasts at the same time and we can run it. Yeah. But the other one is just in general, like whatever happening or. But this can be like the topics can be like generally about sports, about the I don't know countries, the things happening, like or funny stuffs, comedians, or yeah, this kind of things happening. Yeah, I I want you guys to support Refocus because like if Refocus wouldn't support me, like um, I couldn't find any goal and uh, any I, I even like thinking about the future and yeah. I want you guys to support because it means a lot to me. And other thing is like, okay, um, uh, it is really like important for me that like the feeling I have about the refocus. It's like, oh, uh, like you know, guys, like we are all refugees. Like me, Ali, Suda, uh, Rashid, even Douglas. We can call him as a refugee also if he wants to. He yeah, can. yeah, he can be a refugee, but because you know, like the main family is like in other countries like Douglas family is in United States uh, my father family is in Iran or we are all of us like far far uh, 
part of our families and we made this yeah. small community and really like it means a lot to us it's home yeah it's our it's really. not a community it's home <laughs> it's our family yeah it yeah, is yeah we are family chosen family. i know i know yeah it's it's the chosen family and we are always like have our like have our i don't know how our each other or our backs i don't know yeah. each other's backs yeah we have our each other's <laughs> backs <laughs> yeah sometimes like i'm taking two days back <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i'm kidding just but seriously like it feels so good like okay we have a lot of like hard hard times okay a lot of chaos happening or uh, many stuff about the organization or about the uh, europe and this kind of stuff or about the refugees but we are still all together and we have we are together and we're still strong we don't have that much like uh we need but we do our best with the things we have but i want you guys like to support us more because we would never uh because you are looking for honey <laughs> Uh, that that was that was that was nice because like last night I was talking with Douglas here after we came back from the production, and I was like uh, messing around with him and I told him like yeah we did this really good job and we need to take our money but he just said it really really like insane word he told me like uh, he 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 was talking about his uh, first production team he made in uh, in Philadelphia yeah with his students and he said like his students were like the oldest one was 16 yeah. 16 and I'm the youngest one here <laughs> he said like okay we got uh, we made the thing we got our money but the like the important thing is like okay we made the production team we worked but okay our work brings money but before that we catch the honey you know and he said like anything like your you will find here like your best friends your future friends besties and or even like i don't know your future partner or you know family yeah exactly and th i'm saying that and my heart is like coming out from my chest i don't know <laughs> a little bit stressed and shy it's okay uh that's it i want you guys to get like to get back of my family yeah yeah to get back to get back i don't know <laughs> 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 to get back of my family what? My family back. ah okay no no i i want you guys listen i want you guys next to have my later here next to you no, sit in there how can i understand okay you now? okay <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna cut it later, but yeah. uh, <laughs> he can control everything. This guy, the yeah, I'm gonna he control everything. He can make me say anything. Oh my god! I want you guys to um, have my family's back. Cool. Yeah, exactly. I will have your families back. You are you are the part of it. Ah, okay, all right. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Azizam, something to add? So, which camera? Oh, this is my Sude camera. Okay, guys, I wanna tell you a secret. If you are going to online shop, there is a lot of cool design. Guess who designed them? Amazing Ellie. 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 Woo. Ellie. <laughs> so just go to our online shop and buy whatever you want for your best friend, your for, for your family. There is a lot of cool t-shirt for Christmas. Don't forget. I would like to thank uh, the family here, everyone, Douglas Herman, the Bigfoot, the real Bigfoot, and uh, Dawood, uh, Ellie, Suda, myself, Sonia, even though she's uh, far away from us, but she's, th she's with us. And I would like to thank also the part of the Refox family that you don't see, the marketing team, we have amazing marketing, Florian, uh, Chrisa and uh, Yaisa and we have fundraising team also uh, Louise can you please tell me the other names because Jenny. Julie uh, I don't want to forget anyone come on just throw names throw Matthews. names 
Jennifer, Matthew, Jennifer, Jennifer Maggie, yeah, yeah. Maggie, Maggie, of course, yeah, Maggie. Yes, yes sir, and now the yeah. Lesbos, and all of our Matthew. partners. Bart! Bart, Bart. 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 Yeah. we have another Julie also here. All your workshop teachers. Our workshop teachers, Miriam. our students also, uh, everybody, everybody, really. Yeah. Our partners, our uh, organizations, they are helping us. We are collaborating with them also. Thanks to everyone. And remember, we have a Patreon page. Go there because we need to pay to these people here. They need to survive and so they can give you the best of the best. Our website, like Ellie said, uh, Mugs, cool designs, T-shirt designed by the famous uh, Ellie. What else? Famous <laughs> Ellie. Uh, what else? Have a nice uh, Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, yeah. Really. And let's uh, get back at it next year with more passion. And uh, this is life. Life continues. And big thanks for everything I got from here. Thank you so much. And yeah. Perfect, it's perfect. That's life is good. (laughs) 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 Issue. He has a grill. He's like, Yeah, I was cooking it for about an hour and 20 minutes, and it's not crunchy enough. I was like, crunchy enough, you motherfucker. I, when I was growing beep, up, beep, beep, yeah, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> when I was growing up, meat was, oh my God. And you can agree with me. Like when there is like your auntie that you haven't seen her in five years, she's coming and you know you're going to eat meat. So you have to love this bitch that she's coming. Beep. <laughs> like even though you hate her. <laughs> yeah, I remember I hated my auntie, but when she's coming, I know that mom is d- putting me. And this guy's telling me, I wanted it uh, crunchier enough. And I'm like, I didn't even know that crunchy was... Uh, an option <laughs> until I <laughs> until I'm here. So ah oh, really meat can be like this because my mom just like did this and threw it at us. You, we <laughs> have meat. <laughs> she could just we would like we <laughs> we were like lions. And this guy and then I was like, you know what? You know what? I got an insight of your life. Okay, uh, meat can be crunchy. Thank you, but let me give you an insight of my life. People are uh, trapped in these camps and they are living like animals. So th- if I deal with your uh, reality, you can deal with my reality also. And that's not a conflict for me. I'm not saying as it was a conflict. But we are learning from each other. So that's that's my meat to you. That's the crunchy part of my life. <laughs> so I have to deal with it.